Yeah, there we go. It's going smoothly. That's called turning <laughs> your microphone on. There we go. I was wondering. I was about to go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to it, really. <laughs> Ooh, there's my phone. It's on. It's right there. Oh, yeah. So um, here we are. We were we did this about a year ago, and uh, here we are, a year later, yeah. and back things again. Have, back again. It's all the way over, but nope. No, no, we're still. Oh well, we're maybe a little better off, but then again, Definitely. it's been the old up and down. And um, why are we doing this when there's a war going on, Louise? We. Are living because mm. there are people right now that are struggling to live and 137 at least people in Ukraine lost their lives today yeah and um, probably more than we know so um, right and I hope and pray that they will resolve this quickly and that Putin will go home although I don't have much hope for that I, I do hope doesn't seem that likely, but yeah, we can keep hoping. Yeah. In the meantime, we make music um, <clears throat> and uh, try and get a little, um, a little calm, a little, a little beauty in our lives if we can. Um, we're gonna trade songs. I'm gonna start off uh, with a song from my uh, the album that I managed to get out last year called "Looking for the Light," and that's a song called "Hey Baby." And I guess it's about um, forgiveness or starting over, or something like that. Hey, baby. And we'll take turns getting the uh, getting the big screen. Here we go. Hey, baby. Sitting at the window, looking for the light Saw my baby coming home, she didn't look right Said, hey baby, why you look so glum? She said, I'm sick and tired of you, sucking your thumb That hit the soft spot, right where it pains same old puddle whenever it rains I said hey baby you know what I think hey baby let's go get a drink she'd heard it all before sometimes she likes the sound but later in the evening when it all falls down it's a bit short on that merciful gene She starts to speak the truth If you know what I mean Then it's too late to run It's too late to hide No drunken sailor Can hold back that tide I said, hey baby What you say is right Be a good man someday just not tonight, I'll be a good man someday Just not tonight There came a time we drifted on Two separate ways She couldn't understand my business didn't know what to say She went down to Tucson To feel those desert breezes blow Met up with some sweet cowboy The rest I'll never know And one day at the window I was looking for the sun I saw my baby coming home She looked like the one She said, hey baby I won't be your slave, but you know, baby, I think there's something we can say, you know, baby, I think there's something we can 
say As the sun went down I swear I saw a rainbow shine I said, hey baby I think I've seen the light Hey baby Let's start tonight I've seen the light Come on baby Let's start tonight There we go Thank you Beautiful Yeah So that was on your latest album It was indeed Yep and did did you work on that like um, a lot? Did it just come to you? How do you find that you write? Well, it very much depends. That one pretty much just came to me, um, and uh, it you know the the main form comes to you, and then you say, well, that kind of works, but this line, I don't know. We're gonna have to wait on that one for a while. It was that kind of song, but the main thing came out pretty quickly. So. Yeah. Then I worked on the guitar part, so it's been a little more interesting, all that kind of stuff. So, so, so you did, so you did work on it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the initial inspiration, and then, and yeah. then as Paul Simon says, work on the meat and potatoes for it. The meat and potatoes. <laughs> I don't meat and potatoes and Paul Simon. <laughs> he's a wonderful <laughs> songwriter, <laughs> but in terms of meat and potatoes, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what you got? Guitar out of tune. Uh oh. That's the thing about guitars in New England in the winter. Just uh, the heat turns on and your guitar goes right out of tune. Well, it gets dry. Yeah. Ready? Nope. Apparently, I'm still out of tune. Sorry. I'm being a pain here. Just drive me crazy the whole song, so I just try to. Get yeah, no, it's best to take to care of it. All right, well, here we go. All right, so uh, this is a song that'll be on my next record, and I um, send this out to Ukraine tonight. Oh, 
one of those choruses <clears throat> I can't sing that harmony but you know Emmy Lou could or you know I mean there's a there's a there's a, a high harmony there it's already really, <laughs> it's already, okay. it's already I'll lifting just bring, I'll just big bring time. in Emmy Lou to sing the harmony you know, that'd be great yeah. that'd be good yeah <laughs> maybe, we can fi maybe we can fix that up yeah uh, I know yeah. somebody who knows somebody I'm sure <laughs> Yeah, well, but they, they're not taking our calls anymore. That's a problem. Right, right. But anyway, you know, who knows? <laughs> Could happen. Hi, Billy. Billy's here. All right, Billy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to do one here uh, about Lordstown. This is a song from Incantations. <laughs> And it's one of several songs on that album that were, were kind of multi-generational songs. So, um, and, uh, you know, in three or four verses, I'm doing, well, three, here are three, three verses, three generations. And uh, having lived a while, you can, this sort of thing comes relatively uh, naturally. And it's about, you know, it's about auto workers in the Chevy plant and, uh, I've had the good fortune to sing it for some auto workers up in Michigan, and they liked it. And that's a big uh, plus when you're a songwriter. Lordstown. All tired of farming, working 14 hours a day. So he signed on at Lordstown to build a Chevrolet. He bought himself a ranch house in a suburb north of town and watched TV on Sundays. The Cleveland Indians and the he drove up to Lordstown, parked a Chevy in the line. And thank God for the paycheck every time he punched the clock. Every time he punched the clock. Daddy was a prom king He was grandpa's favorite son Spent too much time on football While his schoolwork went undone Yes, daddy was a fullback On that high school team But a knee twist at the goal line Blew up his college he drove up to Lordstown, parked a Chevy in the line. Thank God for the paycheck every time he punched the clock. Every time he punched the I 
I went off to college And I'm proud of what I know but The jobs that I've been offered Won't pay off what I owe Between the layoffs and the robots I won't get what daddy had But at least I'm working And Jesus am I glad I drive up to Lordstown I park my Chevy in the line I thank God for the paycheck Every time I punch the clock Every time I punch the clock Every time I punch the trying to like pick songs as I hear your song I try to pick a song to follow it so um, I've got my whole set list sitting here and I'm not I'm just sort of grabbing songs and wow you know, good for you really, I'm trying to like you know hear hear your topic and then respond so I, I don't know <laughs> that's, that that's I tough just, um, yeah I don't know it's just I, it's, it's kind of fun so yeah. um so I think I'm going to, I'm going to do the song that I wrote called Lay It Down. Um, and a lot of you guys already know the story behind this, but I, um, I used to work in Nashville in copyright administration and, and I got a call from a, a nice older gentleman one day by the name of, um, Mr. Dewey Oxner. And he was a, um, older Southern gentleman, um, a lawyer, from Columbia, South Carolina, and I was determined to put Dewey in a song, so I put him in this one called Lay It Down. So here we go. Young Dewey Oxner got a law degree from Clemson, wet behind the ears and then some simple country guy. Now a public defender, subject. Thank you. 
it's a, that's a song for our times, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, a lot of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's not easy to lay it down sometimes. Um, it's easier for some of us. Um, Okay, I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do a, a, a take a left turn, which I often do, and uh, you're gonna following me on this one, Louise. We'll see how you do. <laughs> um, but <laughs> this is uh, this is called the French moment, uh -huh. and uh, this is a, a song that I first heard. Uh, you know, it was written by a guy named Michel Riva, who was part of a band called Beau Dommage, one a really kind of the Beatles of Quebec back in late 60s and 70s, and, uh, and uh, I was living in Paris at the time and I didn't know anything about Quebec music, and I since listened to a lot of Quebec music, and I'm planning on adding this to a French album I'm working on with a friend of mine up in Montreal called Bernard Posier, poet. Um, and the song is called La Complainte du Foc en Alaska, the lament of the seal in Alaska, and what he's lamenting is the fact that his mate went down to the lower 48 to spin balls on her nose in a circus. So it's a charming little tune. La Complainte du Foc en Alaska. Les ballons 
sur son lit. Ça fait rire les enfants, ça ne jamais longtemps, ça fait plus rire personne quand les enfants sont It's a, it's Lovely. A nice I have tune. no idea about the lyrics of that song, but I will say, because I don't speak French, but um, the auto-generated captions that were coming up on Facebook were hilarious. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, you know, because it was kept trying to like write in English what it thought you were saying, and I think yeah. it actually bleeped you a few times, but I'm not sure. Well, yeah, let's it's see. It's a gorgeous song and lovely, and I'm not putting it down at all. I'm saying, I'm just saying that the English generated captions were funny. Wow, I, that that was probably uh, probably not a good idea, right? No, it's great. <laughs> no, I mean, it's all good. It's Facebook, yeah. man. It's like it's Facebook, Jake. You know? Like, right, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Actually, I do have a response for that song. So. Actually, I was going to ask you if you spoke French because I've got some nice harmony parts for you, but oh. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you do. Well, you know, what's funny is I um, I was on a ship once and we uh, for several months and um, we we ended up uh, and there was a big Jewish contingency on the ship mm -hmm. and they did like a Passover seder and they didn't have a lot of singers on the boat and so they asked me if I would sing. Um, lead the Seder, the singing. And I was like, well, wow. okay, but I don't know. Obviously, I don't know any Jewish song. And they were like, it's okay. Here's the rabbi gave me a tape and he goes, just learn them phonetically. So yeah. I did. I learned seven songs just phonetically. I mean, I knew what in general what they were about, but um, right. I, uh, I led the whole Seder just sort of singing these songs from memorizing the phonetic. That's amazing. So I, I, I know I can do it, but okay. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but, All right. I have a so, song called Paris. So. Oh, nice. I've never actually been to Paris, but maybe someday. <laughs> City glow and lonely, piercing the fog. With no roses, no champagne. Just a broken hearted fool stumbling on the plane. In the grand vacation we always meant to take. Obligation. Cool. 
still want to believe that love never dies, but the sun is setting light. A bangle dream in time takes no less. Everything goes. I gave you all my love, darling. The Paris belongs to me. It's quite a, <laughs> quite a, um, a, a claim there, claiming Paris for yourself, you know. That's know. right. Well, it's not. It wasn't about me. Some yeah. friends of mine broke up, and they, um, one of them, they had a trip to Paris planned as a couple, oh, and they got it. went ahead alone. And so I just got in, fixed on, fixated on the idea of somebody with a broken heart going to Paris. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, having lived in Paris, it's, um, and um, being somewhat, I don't want to say over Paris, but oh, it, sounds yeah, little, <laughs> it sounds a little <laughs> snooty, <Iceland>. but <laughs> uh, Paris is, can be one of those, I mean, there, there are just lots of wonderful French cities and towns, and, and Paris can be pretty harsh. Right, the art. Yeah. Just like New York City, say, or yeah. or London, as opposed to you know yes. Newcastle or something. You know, sometimes away from the center, you're you're better off. But absolutely, but it's absolutely. a it's a great song, nevertheless. Thanks. Yeah. All right, so moving right along here, I'm going to do an unrecorded song. I guess you could call this the anti-forgiveness song when. Someone just doesn't want to make concessions anymore. And that's the title of the song is Anymore. I don't want to be here when you come. I don't want to be here when you try to explain Say you're cold and lonely But I can't hear that refrain anymore I don't want to be here to help you pay your bill I don't want to be here Just don't feel the thrill anymore How can I miss you if you won't go away Why should I kiss you if you don't ever stay Tomorrow's, but I sure don't see how. If the hell. 
must have been in there Let it be now I don't want to be here To hear you talk about romance I don't want to be here When you ask for one more chance I know the music But I don't Should I kiss you if you don't ever stay anymore? 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 pointy there a little pointy <laughs> yes indeed uh it's interesting i i wrote it from one point of view or what i thought was one point of view and then i played it for my kind of writing group and they said no i don't see that as being gender specific so no, that's no. good to know that's good no to know. it's yeah. definitely not gender specific yeah. Yeah. that's good yeah. well i don't know if i'm gonna answer that one <laughs> But I will, um, let's see. Um, I got a, a kind of newish song. One I started uh, several years ago and um, and just I worked on it during the pandemic and, and finally got it to a place where I, I think I like it. So who knows? It might be a totally different song next week, but for now, this is what it is. And it started out as... Um, a story, uh, a true story of um, my sister and I on a plane headed out to California to see my other sister um, about a year after my mother passed. And um, it was just, you know, it was kind of a hard time. It was the anniversary of my mother's death and um, and my sister's 40th birthday all the same weekend. And so, you know, mixed, mixed emotions. And we met this girl on the plane who was, who had been, um, orphaned as a child and now was looking for her biological family and she was flying out to California to possibly meet a sister for the first time and so you know it just kind of so it's like California sort of turned into um, an interesting destination for all of us and um, and I ended up writing this song about it being not only a physical destination but a metaphorical one too so after all of that yapping I'm going to play the song and here we go she had a scar under her eye Like a teardrop Showed through her makeup in the morning light So scared of flying Polished off of drinking Pull her seatbelt down tight She was giving up at birth Yeah, she went through the system Now she's old I'm 
just one of many seekers swinging for the bleachers and mining all my tears for the gold. Yeah, maybe California knows. Oh, California. Picking up the pieces, tried dope, and I tried Jesus. There's a rhyme for you. <laughs> I, I was happy with that one. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, get your attention. That's what we're after. Uh, good one. All right. Uh, moving right along. Um, we're, we're running a little long, but that's okay. I think we'll, we'll hang in there. Um, this next one I'm going to do... Um, if, um, is a song that was written a long time ago, actually. Written about a small river town in North Dakota where I sometimes spent parts of summers with my grandmother. There was a, the river that ran through it grew in the songwriting uh, process. It went from the Cheyenne River to the Mississippi. But the, the, the childhood lessons remained the same. It's called A Question of Style. Boy down by the river Catching catfish in the shade He's too young to care about The mistakes he has made Hot dust rising From the road along the shore You got to eat the apple first To find the car Yes you do And the Mississippi River is wide Takes its sweet time to decide To roll on Or to stop here for a while Cause some things have got to be It's gonna make it to the sea The rest is just a question of style Trucks up on the Across the plains Full of destinations Full of oil and sacks of grain They roll across the bridge up above Where the Mississippi flows They think they're leaving her behind But the river knows Yes it does And the Mississippi River is wide Takes its sweet time to decide Stop here for a while Cause some things have got to be It's gonna make it to the sea The rest is just a question of style My mama's son and your daddy's daughter's like Mississippi mud, Mississippi water, uh -huh.
While the boys sipping Coca-Cola Waiting for the fish to bite He's not worried about the time Cause he's fishing right Yes he is And the Mississippi River is wide Takes its sweet time to decide To roll on Or to stop here for a while Cause some things have got to be It's gonna make it to the sea Rest is just a question of style Rest is just a question of style Rest is just a question a question of style Places and places and people and times yeah. and yeah. yeah, like characters, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Um, so, I this place, New England, has inspired me um, to some degree um, all the time. I mean, it's so beautiful where I live. I live in the Berkshires, um, which is um, about two hours west of Boston and I'm just at the foot of the Berkshires I guess and uh, it's just like a garden show all the time well when it's not snowing we're getting 10 inches of snow tonight and tomorrow so um, when it's not a winter wonderland it's absolutely gorgeous and in the fall in particular it's this area is really known for its leaves and stuff so um, I uh, wrote this song I moved here six years ago and I wrote this song uh, I guess about three years ago and it's called October one day every autumn, a certain breeze blows by. A cold kiss of winter in a clear blue sky. A whisper, a warning, a shot across the bow. The turning of a world going around. October. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> no this is the international signal. The international signal. Uh, we can't hear you.
but I want to make sure that people heard what I did say, which was the first time I heard that song. I thought it was a classic, and it could be sung anywhere from our folk circuit to, you. you know, off Broadway because we don't want to be too pretentious. But you know, it's a, you know, it's a uh, sort of thing that uh, sort of um, more classically oriented Thank you. Uh, singers could do. Um, all right, so I'm, this is going to be my last song, and Louise has got one more as well. And thanks to those of you who came, and especially those of you who stayed, and uh, if there's a donation possibility, which I'm sure you're aware of, um, I suppose I could put that caption up ever so briefly if those of you are interested in um, contributing to the show. Um, Uh, but I'm going to now finish with a, um, a song that I, I wrote for my granddaughters, and I have three of them. I have a grandson, too, but he's just little. The granddaughters are already old enough to be charming and uh, smart and never annoying to me. To their parents, yes, but never to grandparents. You know, grandparents get off. So this one is written to celebrate them and also doing some kind of preemptive mourning for the fact that I won't really be able to see the end of their journey. Okay, thank you. I'm, I need lots of help here, don't I, Louise? Thanks for keeping me in line, all right. Little girl. children grow, but how could I know, children of children's delight, they begin every day, finding their way, lifting their eyes to the
Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much for having yeah. me tonight. Thanks for asking. And wow. This has been really fun. It's fun to yeah. come. Yeah. Well, it was fun last time. It was fun this time. Yeah. Hopefully this time next year we'll just both be relying on our Carnegie Hall dates. And it'll be, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I personally don't mind these online concerts. Yeah. And I plan to keep doing them. Um, yeah. Even if, you know, even though it's opening up a little bit and I am, I have played a couple of live shows um, when Omicron kind of shut it down. And then since then I've played a couple of live shows, but yeah. um, hopefully, you know, we'll start to get back to some kind of normalcy. Well, it is true that there are people who can hear us this way who would not be able to uh, right. hear us otherwise. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. So yeah. thanks again. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. And in response to your beautiful song, um, Adoring Your Granddaughters, I'm going to play the song. Uh, it's a song about gratitude. Um, and it's. I started writing it in Nashville many years ago. And I was working on the lyrics uh, during my day job on Music Row. And I would sometimes go down to the cafe on Edge Hill and 17th and sit and work on lyrics, you know, during my lunch hour. And, um, and I was sitting there one day and, uh, working on this song and a Greyhound bus pulls up and one guy gets off and he's got the full on Nashville look, you know, he's from somewhere else, but he had, you know, a big cowboy hat, buckled boots. He had a beat up guitar case in one hand and a beat up suitcase in the other. And he, was looking around like what have I done um, but he was in Nashville now buddy and I thought I don't know who you are but you're going in my song because there's so many people that show up in that town with so much hope and in their dreams and I uh, hope he made it so maybe he's a big star now for all I know so thanks again for listening tonight thank you so much I'm going to be back doing a solo show on March 1st um, I hope you guys can join me I will uh, put up some notices on Facebook and uh, if you haven't signed up on my mailing list, you can go to louisemosry.com and do that if you'd like. And thanks so much to, uh, to Christopher. Um, it's called I Love This World. This morning I turned off the radio. TV and the internet had to go. Well, there's a lot of good news out there, but you wouldn't know. Good God, I love this world. I love dusty country roads and city lights. Rickety old red barns and dragonflies. Nashville shining like a brand new dime tonight. Good God, I love this world. And there's a new songwriter, he's just off the bus. He's got a guitar and a suitcase, he's looking a little lost. He's got everything to lose, but to hell with that cost.
love this world, how I love this world. Good God, I love this world. Nice one, Louise. A good, good. Uh, it's a good reminder that uh, you know things can get bad, but there's always a lot to like, and we have to be grateful for it. Yeah, right. and we can be grateful for being here. Yes. Hey. Thanks so much for having me. Again. Oh, oh, you're welcome. It was a great pleasure. Great to hear you. And we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get back in touch next year. You know. <laughs> That's right. Who knows. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, exactly. Thanks to everyone for listening. And uh, if you donate, thanks doubly for that. And uh, you can always find Louise um, at her Facebook address and at louisemosby.com. I'm at christophermarkjones.com. Like, subscribe, all that sort of thing that makes this kind of thing go round. And thank you all for finding us on a cold winter night. And uh, hopefully Louise doesn't get buried up to the door. You'll see me in the spring. <laughs> hibernate, hibernate. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks again. Cheers. <laughs>